The last unexplored frontier of our planet is not that of endless deserts or impassable mountains, but rather that of the hidden chasms deep within the waters of our world that seem to hold a number of impossible to understand discoveries scientists are still attempting to understand. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be going over five different underwater discoveries that have been recently made to help shed some light on this deep, dark and mysterious world. Manganese Nodules Discovered Discovered back in 1868, scientists uncovered a large number of strange potato-shaped rocks resting at the bottom of the Baltic Sea that held a number of interesting characteristics that could help to lead to a wide variety of future developments in both industry and research that were later tested and found to be that of polymetallic nodules. These polymetallic nodules, referred to as manganese nodules given their primary composition, are widely debated as to have been formed by the geochemical nature of the bottom layers of ocean beds, seabeds and even some lakes that will form these potato-shaped nodules over the span of millions of years, with only a centimetre of width growing over the span of approximately two to three million years. Now, though it may seem like a tremendously slow process in the formation of the nodules, Given the amount of time in Earth's history that such nodules have been forming, researcher Alan A. Archer of the London Geological Museum back in 1981 had estimated that more than 500 billion tonnes of these polymetallic nodules exist at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. The composition of the nodules has led to a tremendous amount of economic interest as to the proposed deep sea mining projects to recover these polymetallic nodules for the use of industrial purposes. This is due to the makeup of the nodules that are roughly 27-30% to manganese, 1.25-1.5% to nickel, 1-1.4% to copper, and 0.2-0.25% to cobalt. Although these concentrations might not seem all too consequential, the ease of retrieving and breaking down these nodules makes the endeavour highly profitable for any future mining efforts, and given the nature of the massive amounts of deposits of the material, the entire process would make up a multi-trillion dollar industry as well as lead to an economic boom regarding industrial manufacturing with the use of such materials. Given the fact that more and more of these specific manganese nodules are being found across the world, including in shallow lake beds, the materials might prove to be one of the biggest discoveries economically for the future development of industry as a whole. The Silfra Crack Often referred to by the government of Iceland's tourist marketing as a diver's paradise, the Silfra fissure has become one of the most incredible discoveries in the world of diving since it was first measured. The fissure opened up as the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates began moving away from each other at a tremendous speed of roughly 2 cm per year. It is not this incredible tectonic movement that makes the Silfra fissure an incredible discovery, however but more about the perfect conditions of the fissure that allow the spot to be ideal for diving practices and accurate measurements of tectonic movement. The waters of the Silfra fissure are regarded as the clearest waters in all the world, as the fissure is filled with a freshwater source from nearby melting glaciers that is filtered through roughly 50 kilometers of volcanic underground lava rock for more than 50 years and maintains optimal temperatures of roughly 2 to 4 degrees Celsius that keeps out native fish species that would normally pollute the water from ever entering into the region, of which helps to keep the waters completely unpolluted. This allows divers and researchers to see directly down into the 42 meter deep fissure from the top of the water with an expected visibility of more than 100 meters. Given the fact that the fissure itself is accessible from land, it's the perfect spot for inexperienced divers to first attempt which is perfect for geological researchers of whom are interested in getting into the world of diving for future underwater geological studies but have yet to get any experience. As the decades continue and the fissure deepens and widens further, the Silfra crack will prove to be a perfect example of nature wanting all of its secrets to be discovered in the most ideal conditions that could ever arise naturally. The Rediscovery of the SS President Coolidge The story of the sinking and rediscovery of the SS President Coolidge is considered to be one of the weirdest stories to have ever surfaced during World War II and had proven to be at the centre of anti-American propaganda from the Japanese government for many years given the unexplainable nature of the ship's destruction. 
Back during the Second World War, the small island of Espiritu Santo was turned into a military base by the United States during their island hopping campaign against the Japanese Navy. In order to protect the military base from potential Japanese fleets from getting close to the shores, a large number of mines were placed at random spacings all around the island, with information only being relayed to American vessels as to proper approaching procedure. Unfortunately, on the 26th of October in 1942, in an effort to resupply the SS President Coolidge, the captain approached the island from the most obvious route taken without being relayed proper orders of approach and struck a large underwater mine that quickly thereafter sank the vessel. This story was quickly sensationalized by Japanese propaganda in claims that the American vessel was so terrified of encroaching fleets that they had destroyed their own ships in an attempt to get away from the awesome power of the Japanese Navy. However, the true nature of the sinking was of extreme incompetence on the part of the base and relaying proper procedure. Although a number of attempts had been made to recover the ship, most efforts were unsuccessful as due to the large expanse of coral reefs in the region, the ship slid down the coastal shelf and into deeper waters, causing a far more troublesome recovery expedition. By 1980, after the island had gained independence as an island nation, the shipwreck was deemed to be a protected artefact of the government and no further recoveries would be made in an effort to turn the location into a tourist attraction for deep sea diving. Underwater Jersey Locomotives Back in 1985, a man by the name of Paul Hepler was using a device known as a magnometer in an attempt to map out the bottom of the ocean off the coast of New Jersey. During his expedition, he began to notice a strange reading on his device that picked up two large metal objects that were artificial in nature. As he made a dive in the region, he was unable to see what object was at the bottom of the shore as he remarked that the water was incredibly dirty and the region was nearly entirely covered in thick reefs that completely covered anything that could have given off a metallic shine. After later returning to the region when the water had cleared, however, Paul Hepler quickly reported the discovery of the huge metal objects as being two underwater trains that had been lost more than 160 years prior. According to historical experts, the model of the trains that were found were that of the Planet Class 222T models, of which were limited in their production to only a handful of trains due to the fact that by the time they were produced, they were seen as largely inefficient and not worth their cost in production. It is for this reason that experts believe that the trains were tossed into the ocean during a large storm to prevent a ship from capsizing by reducing load. Given the fact that the trains were not worth their production cost and were never going to be sold during its time, it was most likely deemed to be unimportant cargo and so was sacrificed for the sake of the crew. Oddly enough, however, no documents or sources for the trains exist, not even reports detailing missing trains or the production of these specific models having gone missing. This has led some to speculate that the sinking of the trains could have been a deliberate insurance scam during its day or of some kind of stranger reasoning. Loki's Castle Discovery Referred to by researchers as Loki's Castle, a strange discovery was made back in the middle of July of 2008 of a field of highly active hydrothermal vents located between Greenland and Norway in a relatively stable region of the Earth's crust that normally shouldn't have such highly active hydrothermal fields. The site was located by a team of 25 research scientists who claim that the field sits on a mound of sulphide materials more than 825 feet in diameter, making it the largest sulphide material deposit ever discovered. The field itself is made of five large black chimneys of vents that are covered in an exotic form of microorganism white in colour and was named Loki's Castle for its strange similarities to that of the design of fantasy castles often depicted for Scandinavian mythology. The discovery of a number of unique vent species previously undiscovered had been made in the region that researchers believe only exist in this field alone and nowhere else, given their oddly specific adaptations to the surrounding environment. Unfortunately, given its relatively recent discovery and its difficult location for future expeditions and ease of study, not much else is known about this strange underwater discovery. But what do you all think of these strange discoveries that have recently surfaced from underwater expeditions? 
Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.